Hello. If you think of misery and humbug, then you're probably thinking of Dickens, London and Christmas. But you should also think of Bradford in West Yorkshire and October. But if you were thinking Victorian, then you were still right. In October 1858, 20 people died and 200 further people were seriously ill, following them buying and eating sweets laced with arsenic. Well, how and why does a sweet maker lace his product with arsenic? Well, unlike the star of our early video, Mary Ann Cotton, this was not a deliberate attempt to poison children. This all starts with sugar and its availability. Sugar was a valuable commodity in historic times. Basically in the 18th and 19th centuries, sugar was not grown in the UK. It had to be imported from overseas colonies and plantations in places like the West Indies. And the costs of farming and shipping that sugar were high enough already. And then in the tax, which appears in 1815 and it gets worse. And then when the abolition of slavery act was passed, as welcome as that was, it had the effect of raising the costs of sugar even further. It wasn't known as white gold for nothing. It was the target of many a theft and it was even kept in locked strong boxes by householders. The tax alone on sugar in 1815 raked in three million pounds. It's this background that sets us on the path to a mass accidental poisoning. Because of the sheer expense and value of sugar, most confectioners needed a way to be able to sell it to all sections of the community without it becoming either an outright loss maker or just a rich man's commodity. So to offset the extortionate price of sugar, it will be mixed with a cheaper substance known collectively as daff, daft, flash or stuff amongst a range of other nicknames. Commonly, daff would be made up of things like plaster of Paris, chalk dust, limestone powder, gypsum or combination of the above. Not the sort of thing that a confectioner would openly advertise, but also it's not harmful. And this manages to reduce the amount of sugar used to make a reasonable sized sweet and as such make sweets more affordable to the poorer end of Victorian society. And it's nothing historic. Adulteration still goes on today in some areas like coffee. It's not necessarily something to be feared. So to Bradford in October 1858 in the sweet stall of William Hardacre, a popular sweet seller in Bradford's Green Market, which for the locals among you is now the site of the Kirkgate Shopping Centre. William, or Humbug Billy as he was affectionately known, sold peppermint humbugs made by local confectioner Joseph Neal and his assistant James Appleton. Their recipe called for mixing 40 pounds of sugar, 12 pounds of daff, four pounds of gum, and some peppermint oil to basically make 40 pounds of sweets. All very simple enough. But the trouble was, a number of people in this supply chain were just not paying attention. Neil sent a lodger to collect his order of daff from the chemist, Charles Hodgson. However, he was served instead by assistant druggist William Goddard because, ironically, Hodgson was ill. And Goddard had to ask where the daff was stored. He was directed to a cask in the corner of the attic. But the trouble was, the cask Goddard was looking at did not contain daff. It contained arsenic trioxide. So Goddard sold £12 of that. And of course, this went into the sweet making process pretty much undetected. After all, take a look at this montage of ingredients. Can you tell which one is the arsenic? Well, at first glance you can't, neither could they. Appleton did comment that the latest batch of sweets did not look like the others, but he just put that down to a cosmetic issue. And to be fair to him, it wouldn't occur to him that he'd been sold arsenic. He'd used Hodgson's chemists before, for years, and they'd always delivered. Even Humbug Billy noted that the sweets didn't look as impressive and attractive as usual, but again he would put this down to a cosmetic issue. He even used the appearance to get himself a decent discount, ever the auctionman. Now people say that they should have checked, but really, I can't stress this enough, it would not have occurred to anyone that the ingredients delivered would be harmful. Ask yourself this, when you buy sugar or flour or talcum powder, do you perform tests to make sure that you're actually getting what you've bought? 
Or do you trust your regular supermarket brand and supplier? Think about that. That night, at a price of one and a half pence to two ounces, Humbug Billy sold five pounds of the sweets to an eager public. And within a day, the deaths and serious illnesses started. Now initially, the early deaths and illnesses wouldn't arouse suspicion, as the symptoms bear resemblance to common Victorian diseases, and that would make it difficult to detect. Look at this table that we have here and compare the symptoms of arsenic poisoning alongside the symptoms of common Victorian causes of death. See what we mean? But as the death toll mounted, the search for a pattern began, and that pattern pointed to the Green Market and Hardacre sweet store. Examinations of the dead were conducted and chemical tests were performed on the sweets. Dr John Bell determined that the causes of death were arsenic poisoning and prominent analytical chemist Felix Rimmington testified to the presence of arsenic in the humbugs. Not just traces of arsenic, but 14 to 15 grains of arsenic per lozenge. Other contemporary accounts have stated the level of 9 grains per lozenge, but that's really immaterial. Four and a half grains of arsenic is enough to kill an adult. Each sweet contained enough arsenic to kill two healthy, fully grown adults, and these were sold to children in bags of 12. Within the week, 21 people had died and 200 had become seriously ill, including Hardacre, the sweet seller, and Appleton, the assistant sweet maker. The public outcry spread like wildfire and appeared in newspapers the length of the country, not just locally in Yorkshire, but as far as Glasgow to the north and London to the south. This is the Leeds Intelligencer from 6th of November 1858. The area that we're now highlighting is just the list of casualties. Take a look at the ages. There's no starker description of this tragedy than to just look down that list. The pharmacist Charles Hodgson, his assistant William Goddard and sweetmaker Joseph Neal were all charged with manslaughter. The case was presented at York Assizes on the 21st of December 1858, but the inquest ruled that it was accidental and that no criminal charges should be brought. What happened in the aftermath changed British food laws forever, as well as causing the long overdue shake-up of many of our standards of business. The incident led to the 1860 Adulteration of Food and Drink Bill, which introduced many legal safeguards and checks, along with many rules and regulations surrounding ingredients that could be added to foodstuffs. The UK Pharmacy Act of 1868 toughened up the security around the sale and storage of poisons, particularly arsenic, and made this most common of household poisons a strictly controlled and traceable substance, a law which remains in force today. And finally, one piece of legislation came in some 15 years later that would have prevented this problem altogether. In 1874, the sugar tax was abolished. Thanks for watching. Mind what you eat. Bye bye.